Hello and welcome to the skating lesson discusses gymnastics. We could call it Olympian 360. We could call it whatever we want, but let's be honest, who understands strategy, thinly veiled narcissism, backstabbing, overtraining, and being blatantly phony for appearances better than the figure skating world? And we give you Tom Forrester steps down. Well, last night news broke and we'll be reading the headline from the USA Today article by Nancy Armour, USA Gymnastics looking for a new head of women's team after high performance director departs. There will be someone new leading the US women's gymnastics team at the Paris Olympics. Tom Forrester, the high performance director, is stepping down at the end of the year. The announcement Wednesday comes four months after the Tokyo Games, where the Americans failed to win the world or Olympic title for the first time since 2010. By the way, can we just say that Nancy, is a true bitch because, and we, we appreciate this about Nancy. You know, she is a reporter. She is not a nice lady. All right. But remember, Tom tried to fill us with all of that bullshit that it is not just about medals and money. If you remember the talking points that John Manley gave each of those gymnasts, it is that USA Gymnastics only cares about money and medals. And what does she say in the second paragraph of this article? that they failed to win the World or Olympic title for the first time since 2010. And while that is a fact, John Manley may be extremely correct about everyone involved in this sport. It continues, a search will be done for Forrester's replacement. It has been an incredible honor to lead Team USA, Forrester said in a statement. Thank you to everyone who supported me during my time in this role. Pause. I believe Tom really wanted to thank Spencer from the balance beam situation who pointed out just how poor he was at his job each and every day, but he didn't seem to include it in the final press release. Perhaps Lee Lee edited it out. I look forward to supporting the next high performance director as they lead our wonderful women's program. The position of high performance director, previously called the national team coordinator, was created in late 1999 when the United States went to a semi-centralized system that allows athletes to live and train at home and come together for monthly training camps where they were all sexually and emotionally and physically and verbally abused at the ranch. Under Marta Caroli, the national team coordinator had complete control over the women's program. She selected teams for the Olympics and World Championships, set exacting standards for both gymnasts and coaches, and oversaw a pipeline that ensured the U.S. women had an uninterrupted line of medal minting teams. The U.S. women won two Olympic team titles and five World Championships under Caroli, and produced every Olympic all-around champion from 2004 until she retired after the Rio Games in 2016 but Caroli's harsh measures were blamed for creating a, the toxic culture that allowed Larry Nasser and others to abuse young gymnasts. USA Gymnastics has tried to lessen the power of the position, but the person still has outsized influence on the Olympic aspirations of female gymnasts in the United States. Forster was praised for creating a more positive environment for elite gymnasts, particularly at training camps. Gymnasts were not pushed to train or compete when they were injured, and they were encouraged to voice their opinions. And though Nancy doesn't say it, we can tell it's implied, and you all saw the results of that in Tokyo. But while the U.S. women won two world titles under Forrester, he was criticized for being too reliant on Simone Biles, the greatest gymnast of all time. Asked the reasoning for the composition of the Tokyo team when other lineups would have had higher scoring potential, Forrester brushed off the concerns, saying he doubted the Olympic gold would come down to tenths. Biles withdrew from the team competition after rising anxiety manifested itself in the twisties, causing her to lose her sense of air awareness. The U.S. women won the silver medal, finishing well behind Russia. Forrester also was criticized for a lack of transparency, with several gymnasts saying the criteria on which they were judged was never explained to them. Recently, Tom Forrester gave an interview on the most Los Angeles podcast I have ever heard in my life, and yet, we did get some interesting nuggets from this conversation. Tom told us that he has never been asked to be interviewed in his position as the high performance director, which is interesting as Nancy Armour, our best and kindest friend, raised her hand only to say that that was not effing true, that she has asked to interview Tom at each and every meet. And while it is Tom's job to give interviews and perhaps do damage control with the media, or at least assert dominance the way Marta did, engendering the true warmth and admiration of strategic bitches known as newspaper reporters, 
he could not get the sharks in line, and he wilted and hid from them. And while we understand why you would hide from someone who is perhaps smarter than you, we do look at him with ire and think of him as a true fourth place finisher. Because let's remember Tom Forrester and his rise to power and why this position was always so curious to begin with. Tom Forrester rose to prominence during the 1990s. He made his brand on television by being the opposite of Bella Caroli and Steve Nuno. He said that he wanted to be positive, that he wanted the kids to be happy and healthy, only for his top gymnast, who had more charisma than Amanda Borden herself, to quit just nine months before the Olympics, telling us on NBC that the World Championships and the Olympics aren't any different. And while that perhaps throws everything about the Olympic movement <laughs> into question, it makes us wonder why USAG didn't do a little bit of a background check on their own fluff pieces before hiring Tom Forrester for this competition. Now, nine months later, Tom made a fluff piece with NBC where he talked about how he wanted two athletes onto the team and they edited it in a way to make it seem like Tom was all about Tom and not his athletes. And while his athletes continue to post on Facebook and don't seem to be aware of this at all, NBC was there to go for the kill and show every time his athletes fell at the 1996 Olympic trials. And while we are going for a gold medal with, an, with a coach who had athletes who couldn't actually make the first gold medal winning team, this seemed to be you know, lost on very many people. Well, it's also interesting that Tom is so fixated on rank order. If you recall, everyone in God's green earth knew the petition rules in 1996. And while we feel for all of the amazing alternates who could have been on the bronze medal winning team and perhaps the silver medal winning team, they were not going to displace Shannon Miller or Dominic Mochianu. They weren't going to displace Dominic Mochianu with a four centimeter stra stress fracture in her leg because they weren't Dominic Mochianu. They didn't have that level of talent or ability and it's okay, it is sport and they are still amazing. However, Tom seems to be retroactively revising history as though no one knew that these girls were going to be petitioning and it was somehow unfair to his athletes. Well, perhaps we need to look at why Tom shouldn't actually enjoy rank order so much, which is the 2001 National Championships. They also served as the selection for the 2001 World Gymnastics Championships. At that competition, his athlete Natalie Foley was extremely strong on the vault and the uneven bars. Tom is actually an even bar specialist and was on the national team staff for many years for his expertise on that event. Now, Natalie Foley's grips broke on the uneven bars, so she couldn't actually be ranked highly on that event as she fell from the apparatus. Now, at the subsequent competitions and the training camps, everyone on the team and the coaches in 2001 felt that Natalie Foley was actually stronger than one of the other athletes who was on the team. And because they actually went by rank order, Natalie didn't wind up making the 2001 World Gymnastics Championship team, which earned a bronze medal, and it was the first medal in five years, which seemed like a never-ending drought after the 1996 Olympic Games. So if they had actually gone away from rank order and put Natalie on the team, Tom would actually perhaps be a little bit better at his job today. And while Tom Forrester didn't grant many interviews during his time as the high performance director, he did make many posts to his adoring public of fellow coaches and band coaches on Facebook, where he would explain his decisions and how well and happy the team was doing. Now, in order to really make it clear that he was not just all about himself or happy to be there, Tom would then take selfies with other high-performing athletes and gymnastic stars at each of the world competitions that he attended in his role as high performance director, really issuing criticism in that role. Like many of you, I am concerned about who is going to lead this dumpster fire of an organization from the second place to the top of the podium, while perhaps also not injuring the you-know-what out of our top gymnasts. But let's look at the candidates. Currently, the gym internet is supporting Brian Carey because he is actually the one person who was strategic 
over the last several years. While many of them were angry at Jade Carey for taking the individual spot, we have to look at the fact that he's the only coach who is strategic and independent-minded enough to stand up to USA Gymnastics to guarantee his daughter a spot on the team when she risks being tossed aside for a more charismatic or perhaps famous gymnast at any point, and he assured that she would have a spot at the Olympic Games, and perhaps he is the only person strategic enough for the role, and he also helped Rodney McCusker after she left coach Maggie Haney, and she appeared to be healthy and happy during this season until she decided to go over the vault at the qualifying event for the U.S. Championships. And while that is perhaps not his fault as injuries happen, he is perhaps the leading candidate for this role in the Gymternet's eyes, but we cannot necessarily trust the Gymternet because as you remember, they previously considered Amy Borman to be the answer to everything for all positive coaching because she coached Simone, one of the most natural talents of all time, but then her follow-up to Simone Biles was being a part of a multi-level marketing scheme on Facebook and social media. That isn't to say that there are not a list of highly qualified coaches who would be ideal to fill the footsteps of Marta and Bella Caroli. As I look around the gymternet and I look around this great country, I see many coaches who have the leadership, who have the diligence, and who have the passion to fulfill this role. We only have to look to Texas, the state of Bella and Marta, to look at Kim Zemeskel, a coach who has injured perhaps as many athletes as the Corollis themselves. We have no word if Kim has put her hat in the ring for this position. And while we can be assured that Dominic Mociano believes that she is more than qualified to lead this organization, we can also be confident that choosing someone who believes in positivity and in athlete-centered coaching is perhaps the last person that they would pick for this position. So we have to look who else has the diligence, who has the perseverance. Well, I would like to discuss maybe a fairly um, unorthodox choice. Why not Maggie Haney? You know, we have to look at someone in today's day and age who is resilient. And Maggie Haney has been pushed out of the sport by as many as eight athletes, but she has come clawing back over the last several years. Maggie actually recently reapplied for USAG membership for MG Elite, although she didn't apply herself. It was under the name of her boyfriend. So perhaps I am corrected. Maggie did not apply for uh, USAG membership. It was David Stringer. He may live in the same home as her and may reside at the same address and had been involved in the same scandals, but it was not Maggie herself who reapplied for USAG membership. It was David Stringer. And the amazing part is that it was initially granted to USA Gymnastics before it was pulled again. Now you think that that would have stopped MG Elite from going, but no, Maggie has proven her love and passion for the sport as MG Elite is now registered under the AAU for gymnastics, under Gymnastics University. It is registered to her mom, Janet Haney. So as you see, Maggie is the one person who is willing to claw and scratch her way back to the top. Now, if they do not give Maggie Haney a role for high performance director, which would perhaps be a mistake, as we know that Maggie has a strong passion and attention to detail, I've thought of another job that I think would be incredible for the former coach of MG Elite. You know, the show Cheer was having such momentum on Netflix, and Monica Aldama, she gave us the sob stories about athletes who perhaps wound up being as disturbing as Larry Nasser in, uh, in some ways. Yes, in, in some ways, they had similar tendencies. Perhaps the volume wasn't there, but they were on the same trajectory. Well, I believe that Maggie could inspire that same kind of leadership at a junior college. Perhaps she could go back to her home state of Texas. She could coach. And just think about the kind of impact that Maggie could have on the cheerleading world. Now, while Maggie is likely someone who believes that cheer is beneath her, I believe that she could make a true impact. Think about the level of difficulty that she could engender in that sport. Think about the kinds of pyramids and concussions that we could see. If an athlete fell from a pyramid, Maggie wouldn't just let it happen. And while there are some lawsuits that argue that she might have laughed while a girl fell from the top of the pyramid, I argue that we would see pointed toes, bulimic cheeks, ribs in, 
and we would see bones out. If Maggie were one of the best coaches of the cheerleading world, and I think that she could be a rival for Monica and that college from Navarro, and that she could really be making her mark on that sport, and we have not seen the last of Maggie Haney. I also have to look at Debbie and Dina, the, the former Cypress twins. You know, they have been under the radar for many years, but they have also not fully gone away, and they proved that they could perhaps handle mentally damage and, uh, you know, coach uh, dozens of gymnasts at the same time. And though Tom Forrester has never developed an Olympic champion, they are partially responsible for Carly Patterson, even if they had an athlete who was allegedly not allowed to be on network television after she appeared on the International 3 and 3 Championship. Now, we must look also at the kind of diligence and perseverance you cannot give up in gymnastics. You know, skating has the hashtag, we get up. And perhaps this is what USA Gymnastics needs to really embody. And who better to exemplify that than Al Fong himself? This man is a coaching icon. He has come back from perhaps the lowest that you could come back from. It wasn't just that books were written about him in the 90s and tons of articles. It wasn't just that he had two dead gymnasts and four broken necks within a short window of time. This man has kept going. And he proved that if you marry an obscure former Soviet gymnast and stay in this sport long enough, you too can have a world medalist. And I think that Al Fong is perhaps someone who really could be ideal for this role. But I think that there are other more positive coaches that we should be looking at. What about Mary Lee Tracy? I've always enjoyed Mary Lee. She's charismatic. I believe she is the closest thing we will ever get to dance moms. And frankly, she is a God-fearing woman. Now, what I enjoy is that she ensured all of us, none of her gymnasts, were ever touched by Larry Nasser, even though we learned from Amanda Jeter's father that perhaps that was or wasn't really the case. Now, Mary Lee is always positive, and she is always someone who keeps her head in the game. Because any time Mary Lee seems like she is down and out, she will come with a new pixie gymnast, a junior to inspire all of us on the national team. That junior will then likely retire quietly and announce their commitment to LSU, only to return to the spotlight with another pixie gymnast who is then going to the national team and perhaps a future LSU Tiger. You know, we love her, you love her, and you know what? She is consistent, and that is what we like about Mary Lee. But I think that there is one person who is perhaps more God-fearing, more positive, more charismatic, and more loyal to USA Gymnastics, and that is Mary Lou Retton herself. Think about it. Mary Lou Retton has been there. She went to the senator's office to ask them to go easy on USA Gymnastics, only to later claim that she was lied to, although perhaps there were tons of newspaper articles at the time that make us wonder what kind of education Mary Lou actually got while a gymnast at the Corollis. But while we digress because we know that results are everything, we have to look at the kind of parenting that Mary Lou has displayed. And while her one daughter was perhaps photographed as a part of a thug day, we only need to look at the fact that Mary Lou was on national television when she decided to ask her second oldest daughter if she was ever abused by Larry Nasser, And while that clip is now mysteriously taken down from the internet, you saw it, I saw it, and we know that this is the kind of woman who believes in loyalty and allegiance to USA Gymnastics above all else. And I think that they would really appreciate someone with Mary Lou in this role. Now, I have another controversial pick. What about Kelly Hill? You know, there has been perhaps a gruffness to Kelly. There's been perhaps the feeling that she is not warm and fuzzy, that she is maybe more similar to Donna Strauss. But you know what? What did Donna ever do? She said that a gymnast gave a quitter's try. Well, you know what? Did she? What kind of a try was that? Was it lackadaisical? Because I'm still wondering why we didn't see more of the parquets at the top of the podium with that kind of positive coaching. And while I do believe that Donna could teach anyone an anodi or a full twisting swing down on balance beam. I have not seen as many of those skills from the U.S. gymnasts in the last years. Now, I do think that Kelly brings some interesting qualifications. We know that she is a very good coach technically. But you know what? If Kelly Hill is the high performance director, I can guarantee you that Allie Raisman will have a box of soap anytime she chooses to visit the ranch. And that is some reason why we should really look at Kelly Hill. 
Personally, I think that we also might find out from Dominique Dawes why the two don't speak together after we read tons of articles and watched tons of fluff pieces about how Dominique was raised by the Hill family. She was also in the Dominique documentary Art of the Athlete, but they now no longer speak. And like the rest of you, I am dying to know why is that? And if USAG hires Kelly Hill to be high performance director, perhaps as long as they hired some of their CEOs, we may indeed find that out. And that would be interesting for the rest of us who really would like to know the details. What about Valeri Liukin? Now, Tom Forrester said that he was going to bring Valeri back. Now, this is interesting as there are some gymnasts who seem perhaps not so positive about Valeri. Caitlin Ohashi will speak about her former coach, not, never naming him, which perhaps is the kind of thing that was inspired by Val Condos. You know, we could name someone, but not name them. The hands clean in this situation. And I support Val and Caitlin for this uh, kind of thing. She could write a poem about a coach without naming the coach himself, yet we all secretly believe we know who she's talking about, but we are not knowing for sure. But then there's Mackenzie Wooford, who gave an interview that Valeri sent someone in to perhaps check if she actually had diarrhea at the ranch. Now, my figure skating coach tells me that I look like I have diarrhea when I land my axle jump on a near daily basis, but she is not caring enough to actually send someone into the bathroom after me to check whether or not I have it. And for that, I think that Valeri perhaps could be an ideal candidate for this role. We also only have to look at his daughter, champion of the Olympic Games, Nastia Liukin's Instagram, because perhaps we have never seen a more well-adjusted individual. But as we leave this, I think that there is one person who we are overlooking who has the kind of detail-oriented nature. She has the kind of care and concern for others that we are looking for, and that is Olympic balance beam champion, Shannon Miller. Because if you did not see Shannon Miller teach us all how to wash our hands during COVID, then you don't know what a positive impact the sport of gymnastics can have on the lives of others. I mean, this is a sport who teaches us how to have attention to detail, how to have concern for others, and how to know that everything is a media opportunity. And for this, I leave you with Shannon Miller and her Olympic qualification. Hey, Shannon Miller here, and I'm doing some more hand washing videos, of course. We want to uh, make sure we're really washing those hands. I always like to think of it as uh, gold medal hand washing, of course. More so gold medal mindset hand washing, because I think we all wash our hands, hopefully, good hygiene. But, uh, but right now, we really have to wash it, not only to get it done, but to do it the very best that we can do it. And that's that's the golden mindset, right? It's about that time when nobody's watching, right? No judges, no cameras on, but you still have to do the work. So that's what we're doing. We're doing the work to keep ourselves and to keep others safe. So there's a bunch of different steps that you have to go through, which is fine. It's like a little routine you can do each time. You can teach your kids. You can set a great example for them. Super important to do all the steps. Do the interlocking. And the next one's one of my favorites. Not me, my favorite, because my favorite's coming up after that. But this is a twist. And this is about the time where we start thinking, you really need to do all of this. Yes, yes, we do. So it's really important to do each step. And hopefully we'll continue doing this. Just again, to set a good example. My kids are super excited. They want to make the next video with me. So we'll try to figure that one out. All right, here's my favorite part. Take a little massage, a little mini massage. Just really get the palms of our hands. Get a little... All right. Well, that is about it for the hand washing, but the next part is the most important because if you really want to go out there and you really want to stick the landing, dry your hands off first and then don't touch the faucet. <laughs> Nailed it. And like many of you watching this video, I am supporting all of these candidates. 
I do have to say that Maggie Haney is really the most unique individual because while she has been down and out, she has never stopped fighting. It doesn't matter that USAG suspended her. It doesn't matter that IGC and the NGA also suspended her. They are trying to come back to bring the beautiful uneven bars and failed dismounts to gymnastics through Gymnastics University with the AAU, trying to tell parents that that is how we are going to get Division I scholarships. And if that has happened, I would really believe it because it is a new world. It is a new world where your Instagram followers as are as important as your scholarship itself. And I am here for all of you. And I think that Maggie does have these unique qualifications. I also have to say that I do believe deep in my soul that if USA Gymnastics passes over Dominique Mochiano, the star of the Atlanta Olympics and the 1990. season. Good night and good luck, Dominique.